I've done the numbers, I've done the sums Stop all the presses and empty the drums There's nothing left to do but twiddle your thumbs Waiting for the end of the world Before the virus, we had it made I dread to think of all the plans that we laid We'd made a martyr in the publishing trade Then came the end of the world so many writers, exciters, delighters It's been a hell of a ride Ah, but then the industry died ah, It's time to step outside Everyone's reading Everyone's reading You got you a good book You just can't put it Good evening, everyone. I'm very excited to be part of your proceedings tonight to present the 2021 General Nonfiction Book of the Year, sponsored by the Copyright Agency. Copyright, of course, is very important and should never be overlooked, as sadly it was by the Prime Minister's office last year when they distributed thousands of copies, uh, pirated copies of my book, A Bigger Picture much to the displeasure of uh, Sandy Grant and all the team at Hardy Grant. In any event, uh, getting back to this award, past winners of this award include Kitty Flanagan and Beres Buchani. This is a very, very prestigious category. This year's winner will be a work of general non-fiction with mass market appeal, written by an Australian author, which sold well and created a buzz across the Australian marketplace last year. The nominees are... Uncook Yourself by Nat's What I Reckon. Penguin Random House Australia. Ebury Australia. The reaction's been wild. Just the amount of people that have messaged me from all parts of the world, you know? From like kids that are struggling with their mental health or, you know, just starting to cook to people in their late 70s, you know, have just decided to get into swearing. <laughs> it's been pretty awesome. The Space Between, Michelle Andrews and Zara McDonald. Penguin Random House Australia, Viking. I think for you and I, there was a lot of personal stuff in this book um, that we hadn't really shared with a lot of people, you know, our families, first and foremost. So to have this in a book, we were really nervous about. Just stoked that anyone enjoyed it. I think our measure of success when we wrote the book was that we wanted people to read it and then give it to their sisters or their girlfriends or the people in their lives because they thought it was helpful and um, hopefully entertaining enough. Women and Leadership by Julia Gillard and Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. Penguin Random House Australia, Vintage Australia. I am determined to keep raising my voice to say 
that we must seize this moment and make sure that in the future, Australia is a leading nation in gender equality. The Golden Maze, a biography of Prague by Richard Feidler. HarperCollins Publishers, ABC Books. The idea for a book on Prague had been in the back of my mind for almost 30 years. Ever since I first went there in the heady aftermath of the Velvet Revolution of 1989. Phosphorescence on awe, wonder and the things that sustain you when the world goes dark by Julia Baird. HarperCollins Publishers, Fourth Estate. We talk a lot about happiness and there's a lot of studies about happiness and whether you know it's linked to um, kind of wealth or jobs or various opportunities or and how much does it last and how can you sustain it but I really wanted to write about um, what is it like when you feel like you cannot go on. Well that's a pretty tough call isn't it picking between those nominees but the judges have made a decision and the winner of the 2021 Arbia General Nonfiction Book of the Year sponsored by the copyright agency is Phosphorescence on Awe, Wonder and Things That Sustain You When the World Goes Black by Julia Baird and published by HarperCollins. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I didn't think you were gonna say that. Oh, I'm so happy. Alice, wow, thank you. HarperCollins have been um, Amazing. Catherine Milne, I really couldn't describe this book um, very well when I was first trying to pitch it and it, it's still quite difficult to describe. <laughs> and Catherine Milne understood immediately and also to Alice Wood whose unstoppable enthusiasm. And I should also mention Binky Urban as well who's like the world's greatest agent um, and has been there through thick and thin as well. To my mother, who is living grace and is very much a light of our family, and to my father too for his constant ebullience. I also dedicated this to my children, Sam and Poppy, and watching them grow and watching them wonder at the world is like the greatest honour and privilege and joy of my life. Well, how do we match that very popular choice of Julia Baird's Phosphorescence? Now we come to the 2021 International Book of the Year. Now, we have another star-studded lineup of nominees, and once again, a very hard task to choose the winner of this award. The book has to be, or can be, a work of any kind, from fiction to non-fiction, illustrated or children's books, with broad appeal, but it has to be written by an author who isn't an Australian. So that's that's a very wide range. Uh, the nominees are... A Promised Land by Barack Obama. Penguin Random House Australia. Viking. Ottolenghi Flavour by Yotam Ottolenghi and Isabel Frag. Penguin Random House Australia. Ebury Press. Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. Bloomsbury. Bloomsbury Circus. Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Ashed Australia. Headline. Women Don't Owe You Pretty by Florence Given. Hashed Australia. Cassell. And the winner of the 2021 Arbia International Book of the Year Award is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid, published by Bloomsbury Circus. It is the best feeling to finish a novel, even when it's still a mess. It's the best feeling to finally finish it. And even though it doesn't really look super comprehensible when you finish it, it is the best thing to finish it. And then from there, like, you know, I said before, this is a community thing, getting other eyes on top of it and making it as great as it can be just feels so lucky and, and, and incredible to see other people's eyes transform your work and to be the best that it can be on its terms. And now, please welcome isolation cooking champion and YouTube sensation, Nat's What I Reckon. G'day champions, I'm Nat from Nat's What I Reckon. There's a lot of big words in this and I tend to swear a lot, so I'm having to try and curb the swearing, so uh, buckle up, should be a good time. <laughs> 
Tonight I'll be presenting the 2021 ABIA Illustrated Book of the Year Award. This award will go to an illustrated book of any genre with high production values. Plus, the design has to be super rad. <laughs> Past winners of this category have been some serious champions. Maggie Beer. So you've got a bit of competition here. I don't know what to do with my hands. And the nominees are... A Year of Simple Family Food by Julia Busatil Nishimura, Pan Macmillan, Australia. Plum. You know, the whole idea of the book was about cooking seasonally and it's about sharing food with your friends and family and, you know, even cooking food just for yourself, taking the time to cook, you know, really good food for yourself. In Praise of Veg by Alice Zavslavsky, Murdoch Books. In Praise of Veg was my response to having spent years trying to convince kids to fall in love with vegetables and realising there's not just the kids that need convincing. And I really wanted to write a book that anyone of any age can pick up and find inspiration from and feel empowered by. Plantopedia by Lauren Camilleri and Sophia Kaplan. Smith Street Books. We're totally blown away to discover that this book has been shortlisted for this incredible award. To be recognised amongst such a fine collection of books is a real honour. Additionally, it felt like really great timing when the book came out. It seemed to tap into a newfound interest that lots of other people had discovered um, in plants. Locked in at home and in uncertain times, heaps of people had discovered the fulfilling, calming and beautifying flowers of indoor gardening. Yeah. Loving Country by Bruce Pascoe and Vicky Shakuraglu. Hardy Grant Publishing. Hardy Grant Travel. For me, it's really um, really deeply appreciating what the time was with the people around the country and what it might mean for them and the stories that they share and what they want people to know about their country. I think it's a really good opportunity for us to talk to the country about the book and these places and uh, about Aboriginal culture in general. I just hope that it's how people carry themselves through this whole country and in their conversations with each other, with others, and with the land itself. Beatrix Bakes by Natalie Paul. Hardy Grant Publishing. Hardy Grant Books. I wanted to share how I felt about baking, that it was this beautiful elixir of mindfulness and connection. But mostly I was propelled to encourage and enable readers to spread their flowery wings. And the winner, well that was loud, of the 2021 ABIA Illustrated Book of the Year Award, put your hands down Nat, goes to none other than the biggest champion out, Alice Zaslavsky in Praise of Veg, published by Murdoch Books. Fuck yeah! Alice is a bloody champion, not surprised at all. Go on, champion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to compose myself. I, I have so many people that I want to thank. My publisher, Jane Morrow, who believed in this book. My illustrator, Vera Babita, who's been with me through Phenomenon, through this book. This is her first book. She's done an incredible job because she's made the vegetables jump out at you just as much as the photography of Ben Durnley, gorgeous styling from Lucy Tweed, Samantha Parrish, my food editor who helped M Murdoch Books. You have believed in me from the start. You've already committed to my next one. So <laughs> I'm so, so grateful to the sales team, to the booksellers who have backed this book on every medium, in every little independent bookshop and online through Booktopia through um, you know so many other channels Bruce Pascoe whose work I'm always such a fan of and of course my cookbook sisters Natalie Paul and Julia Busatil Nishimura I had absolutely no hope of winning to be honest I was just grateful to be shortlisted so um, far out and now, please welcome athlete and author, Taria Pitt. Hello, my name is Taria. I'm an athlete, author, fellow book enthusiast and mum of two young boys. Um, it's an honour for me to be part of the Arbiers tonight. And I'm really excited to be presenting the Arbia Awards 
for the picture book and the younger children's book categories. Now, the first award is for the 2021 Arbia Children's Picture Book of the Year, which will be awarded to a children's picture book popular with children aged zero to six, both written and illustrated by Australians. And so the nominees are... Sing Me the Summer by Jane Godwin and Alison Lester, a firm press. This book is written by me and illustrated by my good friend, Alison Lester. Alison and I have worked together in many ways over the years, but this is the first time that we've collaborated as author and illustrator. And I was so excited and happy when Alison herself suggested that she might like to illustrate this text. I'm very excited to be shortlisted as the illustrator of Janie Godwin's beautiful Sing Me the Summer in the Arbias this year. Bluey the Crick by Bluey. Penguin Random House Australia and Puffin. The creek is beautiful! Yeah. I did it! Yeah, you made it, Squirt! Yeah, I did! Here we are. Wow. I don't think I've been here since I was your age. When We Say Black Lives Matter by Maxine Beniba Clark. Hachette Australia, Lothian Children's Books. It's actually quite incredible to be shortlisted for this award. You know, it's an award that is judged by industry, by the people who publish your books, design your books, are passing your books over the counter, are publishing your colleagues' books. And, you know, to be actually judged by peers and colleagues, I think is a really incredible thing. Our Home, Our Heartbeat by Adam Briggs, Kate Moon and Rachel Sara. Hardy Grant Children's Publishing, Little Hair, Windows by Jonathan Bentley and Patrick Guest, Hardy Grant Children's Publishing, Little Hair. My day job when I'm not an author is a physiotherapist. I'm just so chuffed. I've just received the great news, the amazing news, the great honour that uh, I've been nominated for an Arbia. How good's that? And the winner of the 2021 Children's Picture Book of the Year is... Our Home, Our Heartbeat by Adam Briggs, Kate Moon and Rachel Sarah. It's published by Hardy Grant Children's Publishing and Little Hair. So congratulations for that one. That's so amazing. Oh my God. Is that, that's actually true? Yep. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I guess I feel like I'm going to cry a little bit. That's dope. Crazy. Well, send the award to those girls because they nailed it. <laughs> I would love to thank Adam for inviting me to be a part of it um, and Rachel, obviously, for yeah working so amazingly collaboratively. Obviously, Briggs for, like, bringing me on board and, like, Kate and the whole Hardy Grant team. I just feel overwhelmed and lucky and grateful to everyone involved in it. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> That's what sells a kid's book, right? Is those pictures and those colors and all those things and like all the different kids and all the different ways that we all look and, you know, it was important to capture that, all the different shades that we are. So thank you. And so the next award that I'd like to present is for the 2021 Arbia Book of the Year for younger children, which will go to a children's book popular with children aged zero to eight written by an Australian author and released in 2020. So, the nominees, they are... The Grandest Bookshop in the World by Amelia Mellor. A firm press. Took the Children Away by Archie Roach, illustrated by Ruby Hunter. Simon & Schuster, Australia. This is a very special project for me. Not only because of uh, the song, but also because the book contained uh, paintings of my late partner, Ruby Hunter. This was our last collaboration together. Holopox, The Hunt for Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. Hachette Australia, Lothian Children's Books. It's a massive joy to be kind of shortlisted in this group of really clever, heartfelt, funny, wonderful books by creators that I really admire. And I just feel really privileged to be part of that group. The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dangerous Animals by Sammy Bailey. Hachette Australia, Lothian Children's Books. 
we really need to see these creatures living for much longer than they than they do in some cases. And I really hope that kids out there who are reading my books are able to make that change. Finding Our Heart by Thomas Mayer and Black Douglas. Hardy Grant Publishing. Hardy Grant Travel. We're really wrapped that uh, this is being shortlisted. The book is important. It's not just a story. It's actually about a political movement. It's about the Uluru Statement from the heart and the need for this country to realise the aspirations of that uh, very special statement that calls for voice, treaty, truth. And the winner of the 2021 Arbia Book of the Year for Younger Children is The Grandest Bookshop in the World by Amelia Miller, published by Affirm Press. Congratulations, team, for that epic book. You're kidding! and excited and pleased to have won in my category. Uh, I'd really like to thank Affirm Press, uh, including my wonderful editors, Meg and Tash, and the two editors who were involved earlier, um, who were Claire and Davina. Um, thank you, Martin. Um, thank you, everyone who's involved in the whole team. Um, huge thanks to my family. <laughs> um, and I'd also like to thank the um, the descendants of the Cole family who've been really supportive and wonderful. Um, thank you all so much. This is a huge honour. Thank you to all of the 2021 Arbia sponsors for making this broadcast possible. Please welcome presenter, podcaster and author Yumi Steins. Hello, it's Yumi Steins here from the very scenic city of Sydney. And what an honour it is to present two awards tonight for the 2021 Arbias. I won one of these last year with my co-author, Dr. Melissa Kang, also known as Dolly Doctor, for the book that we co-wrote for young children called Welcome to Your Period. So I know what it feels like to be an author and I know how nerve wracking it is to be nominated. Good luck, Godspeed to everybody who's in every category tonight. So the first award, is the 2021 Abia Book of the Year for Older Children. This category is given out to an Australian author who has written a book that is popular with kids 13 years and older. And the nominees are... Jane Doe and the Key of All Souls by Jeremy Lachlan, Hardy Grant Children's Publishing. Every time a reader reaches out to me to tell me how much they've loved it, um, it, it fills my heart and blows me away. It's been particularly awesome to see the love for Jane and Violet's relationship. There aren't that many uh, queer action adventure heroes out there, um, so that's very cool to see. Future Girl by Asphyxia, Alan and Unwin. The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix, Alan and Unwin. I am absolutely delighted that the book has been shortlisted. Uh, I've worked my entire life in the book industry one way or another, not just as an author, so it is particularly meaningful. Thank you and I'll uh, raise a, a toast to that and to all of you, thank you. Aurora Burning, The Aurora Cycle 2 by Amy Kaufman and Jay Christoph. Alan and Unwin. Every award is special, but something that is nominated and decided by booksellers is in a category of its own. So many of my early memories are of taking my pocket money to my local bookshop, which is still my local bookshop. And, you know, I still go down there today and I get recommendations, I get to say hi, they put me onto authors I never would have found otherwise. Please Don't Hug Me by Kay Kerr. Text Publishing. I wrote it with a small audience in mind, which was autistic teenagers. 
and I knew or I felt like there would be value for some people in seeing their experiences on the page, but everything else has been a wonderful surprise. It feels like the conversation and the understanding around neurodiversity and around autism is changing and that makes me feel really hopeful. And the winner of the 2021 Children's Book of the Year for Older Kids goes to The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix, published by Alan and Unwin. Wow, this is fantastic news. Um, I'm so delighted to hear that. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you to everyone involved in their abiers. And uh, here's to all writers and publishers and booksellers and readers everywhere. I drink to you all. Thank you. The next award I'd like to give out is the 2021 General Fiction Book of the Year Award sponsored by Booktopia. This award goes to a work of general fiction with mass market appeal and it has to be written by an Australian author. The nominees are... The Survivors by Jane Harper, Pan Macmillan Australia, Macmillan Australia. As always, I'm inspired by the landscape and the characters. Um, I want characters who um, readers can relate to and who feel authentic um, and they can hopefully recognise some, something of themselves in the, the characters. Um, and I also want to set the book against a really you know, strong and um, memorable landscape, which I thought in um, The Survivors was um, just perfect for um, that kind of really beautiful Tasmanian coastline. The Godmothers by Monica McEnany, Penguin Random House Australia, Michael Joseph. I love the drama and mystery and the comedy that you can come up with um, when you're writing about family. And I poured, I poured as much as I could of all of that into The Godmothers. The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. A firm press. The Good Turn by Dervla McTiernan. HarperCollins Publishers. It is such an honour to be nominated. I think like so many um, writers I have my fair share of imposter syndrome. Um, there is a big part of me that just thinks that any day now someone's going to come along and just take all of this away. And being nominated for something like this, it just, it gives you a little bit of confidence and maybe a little bit more faith in yourself. The Morbids by Eva Ramsey. Alan and Unwin. I think all I've really ever wanted to do since I was a little kid is write. And so, you know, I don't feel like I'm, I'm no spring chicken, but to know that sort of the industry sees my voice and me as, as a, a rising star and, a, and something and someone that could have a future in this industry is so hugely affirming and exciting. And the winner of the 2021 General Fiction Book of the Year, sponsored by Booktopia, goes to The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams, published by Affirm Press. Oh, really? You're kidding? Oh my God, <laughs> I did not expect that, <laughs> you, you sneaky thing, you've just thrown that at me. Nothing I've ever done has been done on my own um, and this book is no exception uh, and so there's a few people I'd like to thank and acknowledge and first and foremost I'd like to acknowledge that this book was written on Paramount Country of the Adelaide Hills and also Ghana country of the Adelaide Plains. And I'd like to acknowledge um, the elders of both those peoples, uh, past, present and emerging. I also have to thank, of course, uh, the whole team at Affirm Press, Martin Hughes, um, Kieran Rogers, Grace Breen, Laura McNichol Smith, and of course, um, the best editor in the world, Ruby Ashby Orr. Tony Jordan deserves a really special mention. Tony Jordan is known to so many other writers as a wonderful mentor, and I had the privilege and joy of being mentored by her also. Um, of course, the people at Oxford University Press who gave me access to all of the um, archives for the Oxford English Dictionary, um, and in particular, Peter Gillibar, Beverly McCulloch, and Martin Moore. Um, I was very generously funded by Arts South Australia to do um, a research trip to um, the UK to research this book. And finally, of course, uh, my family and friends and my partner, Shannon McCune in particular, and my children, Aidan and Riley. And now please welcome founder of Tidas for Tidas, Marley Silver. 
Yama, my name is Marley Silva, and I'm so excited to be here with you tonight to announce the small publishers categories, which recognize the work of small publishers and their teams. The first award is the Small Publishers Adult Book of the Year. The winner will be a work of outstanding adult fiction or nonfiction with broad appeal, written by an Australian author and published by a small publisher. And the nominees are... Glimpses of Utopia. Real Ideas for a Fairer World by Jess Scully, Pantera Press. Glimpses of Utopia was inspired by the fact that I feel optimistic about the future because I meet extraordinary people who are making the change that they want to see in the world. And I engage with them every day, but not everyone I know, actually most people I talk to don't have that opportunity. And I wanted to share some of that. The Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott. Text publishing. It didn't feel like it made much sense for me to write about the real world, so I started inventing myths and fables and trying to pass how I was feeling about the world into, into these stories that felt hopefully felt tangential to what was occurring around us, but also in a mythic or fabulous way. Stone Sky Gold Mountain by Miranda Rowo, University of Queensland Press, UQP. I know at the moment there's, there are a lot of culturally diverse novels for us to read, but when I was growing up there weren't, they were very few and far between. There weren't many um, books that featured characters who were Chinese or Asian, um, and when they were depicted a lot of the time it wasn't sort of in a positive light or um, very accurate. So I was really keen on writing a book for, um, I guess for others like me, um, about our stories. The Animals in That Country by Laura Jean McKay, Scribe Publications. I love hearing people's different takes on on how they feel about the animals in our lives. Um, suddenly having a voice and and speaking on the page. Living on Stolen Land by Amberlyn Quemolina, Magabala Books. And the winner of the Small Publishers Adult Book of the Year is. The Animals in That Country by Laura Jean Mackay, Scribe Publications. What? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> really, did I win? But the books are so great. <laughs> this is so cool and unbelievable. And thank you so much. Congratulations to, to Scribe Publishers um, because this is for the Small Press Award and what an incredible small press they are. They just do, they're called a small publisher, but they do big things and their books are just extraordinary. Um, everyone should read them. So huge c congratulations to Scribe. And now to present the award for the Small Publishers Children's Book of the Year. The winner will be a children's or young adult book with broad appeal, written by an Australian author and published by a small publisher. And the nominees are... My Shadow is Pink by Scott Stewart, James Layton and Larrikin House. It's been unbelievably heartwarming you know, to wake up every day and have messages from parents from around the world you know, saying that they finally have their child being represented uh, positively in a really beautiful way in media has been absolutely incredible. Metal Fish Falling Snow by Kath Moore, Text Publishing. I've had such an informed and heartfelt response um, from readers and, and critics um, and people that sit within that, that YA space and um, there's been such an openness uh, um, that's an affirmation of the passion that I think Australians um, have for, for storytelling. Found by Bruce Pascoe and Charmaine Ledden-Lewis, Magabala Books. Uh, it's fantastic to be nominated because this uh, book was created in order to give a new Aboriginal illustrator a chance. Um, Charmaine has also uh, received a lot of positive feedback. This is something that hasn't always been comfortable to discuss and I think if we start young uh, then then it's a wonderful opportunity to make that normal and make that part of our, our nationwide knowledge base. Bindi by Curly Saunders illustrated by Dub Leffler. 
Magabala Books. Family. Auntie Faye Muir and Sue Lawson. Magabala Books. And the winner of the Small Publishers Children's Book of the Year is... Oh, a personal favourite of mine. Bindi by Curly Saunders, illustrated by Dub Lefla, Magabala Books. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Firstly, of course, thank you, Magabala. Um, thank you so much to Rachel Binsala and Grace, my wonderful editor, um, to Joe, my designer, and Dub Leffler, my incredible illustrator. This book is, um, is what it is because of your craft. And I feel so lucky to, to share this important story with you. Please welcome Hollywood superstar and author, Matthew McConaughey. Hello everyone, Matthew McConaughey here, and I am thrilled to be with you on this night of nights for the Australian book industry. I'm also pleased that my book Green Lights has been shortlisted for International Book of the Year. Very, very honored and exciting, thank you. The winner of the biography book of the year will be a high quality biography or autobiography with broad appeal, written by an Australian author which sold and created a buzz in the book trade. And the 2021 ABIA Biography Book of the Year nominees are... The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jaku. Pan Macmillan Australia, Macmillan Australia. And every day when I wake up, it's another day for me as supposed to be dead. You see, when this number was put on my arm, I was condemned to die. That's Auschwitz. You know, and I didn't die. <laughs> See, that's beautiful. Truganini by Cassandra Pibus. Alan and Unwin. It's uh, a really important book for me. Um, I think it's an important book for Australia, and I, I see the shortlisting in such an important um, prize to be recognition uh, more of Truganini actually and her importance in the Australian story as it is a recognition of me but on the other hand you know I'm thrilled on both counts that that's the case yeah. Paul Kelly by Stuart Coop, Hachette Australia. Over the the last five or six years when I seem to have written an enormous um, amount uh, I've realized that uh, a lot of what I'm doing without setting out deliberately to do it is, is documenting stories and lives in the music business and associated areas of, of Australian popular culture. Boy on Fire, The Young Nick Cave by Mark Mordu. HarperCollins Publishers, Fourth Estate. Kind of redemptive if I'm honest about it. Like I, I learned a lot, I felt a lot, I had lots of lows and, and highs. And to come to the end of the process and be so rewarded means a lot to me on a, on a profound level. A Bigger Picture by Malcolm Turnbull. Hardy Grant Publishing. Hardy Grant Books. Writing this book was a pretty intense business. There are parts of my life, uh, painful episodes that were hard to write about. I want to congratulate all the other authors of the other shortlisted works and uh, wish them all the very best of luck. Thank you. The 2021 ABIA Biography Book of the Year, proudly sponsored by Borrow Box, is The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jacob. Published by Pan Macmillan, Australia. Congratulations, Eddie and Pan Macmillan. Keep on writing. You want to pull me? Well done. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. This is very nice. I'm really happy. I think uh, Pam Macmillan and especially Kate, who came here quite a few times, and uh, my children, because they also had to convince me, because I always used to say, what for? There are so many books. Well, how did I know that my books will be different to all the others? Not only to read the book and be happy and be lucky enough to read it, to apply what I say to do, to make this world a better place and remove certain words from your vocabulary.
that the children and the grandchildren don't repeat those words and put them one day in action. And you know, I say all the time, happiness is something if you share, it doubles. And that's beautiful. Because if you keep it for yourself, it's nothing. But when you share it, that's important. Ladies and gentlemen, our next presenter often has the blues, but he's here on this happy occasion to perform a very special song for us. Would you please welcome Ash Grunwald. It's a great honour to be playing for you guys and congratulations to all the nominees and the winners. I'm a professional musician, but I'm also the author of a book called Surf by Day, Jam by Night, which is out on Pantera Press. This is a simple little song about those internal workings, how they can make or break you, despite whatever level of prosperity or success you have. This one's called Whispering Voice. Well, there ain't no one as close to me. Every tea that I shed. Whispering voice in my head, and there ain't no one can wave a wand. The dreams and plans hatched in my bed. There ain't no one but my old best friend that whisper. Stupid thing I said Well, there ain't no enemy Stronger It's that whispering voice In my thing I said There ain't no enemy stronger than that whispering voice in my head Said there ain't no enemy stronger than that whispering voice Welcome presenter, actor, and author, Matt O'Kine. Hey, what's up? Matt O'Kine here, and I'm so excited to be a part of this year's Arbiers, presenting the award for 2021 Audiobook uh, of the Year. Uh, now, you might be wondering why I'm driving a truck. Well, truck drivers are some of the most voracious audiobook consumers in the market. Yeah, audiobooks can really make the time fly when you're out in a long haul. Yep, yeah, you can put a lot of miles behind you listening to an audiobook on the old tape deck. Now, the winner of this award will go to an audiobook with high quality production values and broad appeal, based on a book by an Australian author of any genre. But the audiobook has to have been published in 2020. 
regardless of when the print publication date was. Shall we find out the nominees? Tell Me Why by Archie Roach, narrated by Archie Roach. Simon & Schuster, Australia, produced by Sound Kitchen. The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jaku, narrated by Yasek Koman, Pan Macmillan, Australia. Macmillan Australia Audio. Hate is a disease, it's like a cancer. It destroys your enemy, but in the process it destroys you because you're going to hate everything, your cat, your dog, your everything. Your job is important. Why? We have no, we have no uh, medicine for that. Phosphorescence on awe, wonder, and the things that sustain you when the world goes dark by Julia Baird, narrated by Julia Baird, produced by Belinda, HarperCollins Publishers, and Harper Audio. There were so many people wanting to talk about the things that we share, uh, our basic humanity, a yearning for um, things beyond ourselves, a deep love of nature, of stillness, of um, kind of trying to seek some kind of calm as well as connection. Mammoth by Chris Flynn, Narrated by Rupert Dagus. Wave Sound. I'm here to say that I am absolutely stoked to be on the shortlist for the Australian Book Industry Awards um, for the best audiobook of the year. Honeybee by Craig Sylvie. Narrated by Harvey Zylensky. Wave Sound. Alan and Unwin. I've had the great fortune of hearing from many, many listeners who have fallen in love with this audiobook. People have been so captivated and transported that they've missed train stops or pulled over by the side of the road because they're so immersed. And the winner is... Tell Me Why by Archie Roach, narrated by Archie Roach, published by Simon & Schuster Australia. Yes! Go Archie! <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, my publisher, Simon and & Schuster, and my manager, Jill Shelton. My gratitude goes also to the booksellers. Thank you to all of the 2021 RBS sponsors for making this broadcast possible. Please welcome journalist and author, Trent Dalton. Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to be with you tonight to present the award for the Matt Ritchell New Writer of the Year. Uh, this award means so much to me. In 2019, I was lucky enough to be given a bunch of awards for my first book, Boy Swallows Universe. And the Matt Ritchell Award for New Writer meant something very, very special to me. Um, as you all know, it honours a publishing great who was lost to us all too soon. This is an award for a new writer, awarded to a new and previously unpublished Australian author of any genre who made an impact during 2020. And the nominees are... Luckies by Andrew Pippos. Pan Macmillan Australia. Picador Australia. I, I'm not sure if I'm taking the awards in the right spirit, but I really see it as a recognition of the, not just the book, but also the publicity campaign behind the book and the team behind the book. Um, and I've been so lucky to work with amazing people. Just a dream group of publishing professionals on my first book. The Coconut Children by Vivian Pham. Penguin Random House Australia. Vintage Australia. When you find a way of expressing something that no one's, that people have felt before, but that you think has never been articulated before, I think there's, it feels huge. It feels like you've done something for someone that you don't know. And even if no one reads what you've written, it, it feels like there's some significance to it. The Song of the Crocodile by Nadi Simpson. Hachette, Australia. I spend a lot of time by myself working and sculpting and shaping. And then people came in to the world uh, of the writing and then they, they helped me hold it and they passed it on to others. Um, and so those people are really deadly and I'm not surprised that uh, in a way people are connecting to it. A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing by Jessie Tu 
Alan and Unwin. I really just wanted to write for myself. I just wanted to write to see myself on the page. And so for so many people to have embraced this book and turned their attention to it is just in a world today where so many people are, it's so easy to just go online and watch a movie or whatever, um, spend you know hours on Instagram. It's really flattering that people would take the time to read a novel. The Morbids by Eva Ramsey, Alan and Unwin. It's really, really exciting. I'm still in a lot of shock. I, I was really, really not expecting it. Um, but it is hugely affirming and just such a, a, it's so important to know that, yeah, my book has made an impact and affected people. And the winner of the 2021 Matt Ritchell Award for New Writer of the Year, sponsored by Simpson Solicitors, is Vivian Pham for the Coconut Children, Penguin, Random House. Whoa. Um, <laughs> thank you so, thank you so, 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 so much. Um, that's, that's crazy. I think that's the first, I think that's the first thing I've ever, I've ever won. Well, the book has ever won. So first I want to thank my sister, Kim. Um, I want to thank my brother, Daniel. I want to thank my three little furry sisters, Happy, Lucky, and Bambi for always sitting with me when I'm writing and being there. Um, I want to thank, I want to thank Allison and Richard and Bilal and Kath. And I want to thank Patrick. And I want to thank Meredith and Benithan and Maddie. Um, and I want to thank James Baldwin. Uh, I think, I think that's all I can fit for now. Um, thank you so much. Please welcome Charlotte Wood. Hello, my name is Charlotte Wood and I'm very excited to be here in the Miles Franklin room of the State Library of New South Wales. Uh, it's a room filled with Australian books over decades and decades and um, so it's a perfect place to be here to announce these awards. So I'm so happy tonight to be presenting the Bookshop of the Year. This award is open to individual physical bookshops in Australia that demonstrated excellence over the course of the 2020 calendar year. The bookshop may be part of a larger chain, but this award is for an individual bookshop as judged by a panel of industry experts. So the nominees for the 2021 Arbia Bookshop of the Year are. The Sun Bookshop. I have always been a massive reader. And it is really exciting to be part of a community that takes books, fabulous books, makes them, gets them into the hands of people who love them. Mary Martin Bookshop Southgate. You know, I, I can't even begin to explain what it means to us, uh, especially after such a difficult year last year, you know, for so many of us, but for a Melbourne CBD, indie bookshop you know it, it really was tough and uh, <laughs> I, I you know frankly if we win this year uh, I think I'm just gonna ugly cry I'm that excited and it feels like such a relief really just to be just be soft talking to you today the little book room avid reader books kunikinya we are delighted to be on the shortlist for the 2021 ABIA Bookshop of the Year. Matilda Bookshop. All of us are here for the same reasons. All of us here love reading, we love books, we love literature, we love meeting authors. There's not a part of what we do that doesn't really excite us every single day. Before I announce the winner, I am excited to let you know that there is a highly commended in this category, and that goes to the Sun Bookshop in Victoria. Fantastic bookshop, congratulations to you. But now the winner of the 2021 Arbia Bookshop of the Year is Avid Reader in Brisbane. Congratulations to everyone at Avid. Wow. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That is a thrill and, and a big honour. Yeah, not, not what I was expecting at all. On behalf of Kev, my partner and I, we would really like to thank our staff first and foremost. 
Uh, many of us, many of them have been with us for a very long time and we really value everything they do every day. Um, I'd like to thank um, our customers who have gone out of their way to support us for more than 24, 24 years now. Um, I'd like to thank the publishers who have really been there for us, particularly last year, but for the last 24 years as well. Um, and of course, the authors, where would any of us be without them? And a special shout out to all the other bookshops. Now it's time for me to present the Literary Fiction Book of the Year. This is an award that is very close to my heart um, as I won it last year and uh, I know how exciting it is for the winner. So I'm thrilled to be a part of this tonight. The winner of this award will be a work of outstanding literary fiction with a broad appeal, written by an Australian author. It will have been well reviewed, sold well across the Australian marketplace and been a candidate for literary prizes and awards. The nominees for the 2021 Arbia Literary Fiction Book of the Year are A Room Made of Leaves by Kate Grenville Text Publishing I was quite kind of surprised that a book about Elizabeth MacArthur, who is a fairly obscure part of our fairly obscure history, uh, would have done so well. And I think it's because uh, there's now a readership that's actually hungry to know beyond the stereotypes about our history. A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing by Jessie Tu, Alan and Unwin. Writing is an exhilarating process for me in the sense, in the same way that um, having a deep, interesting conversation with someone is an exhilarating experience. It's a way for me to process the convoluted, contradictory, confusing ideas that I often have in my own head and just trying to lay it out on the page is so, it is very exhilarating. All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton, HarperCollins Publishers, Fourth Estate. I bury just as much personal treasure in All Our Shimmering Skies as I did in Boy Swallows Universe. And the wonderful thing that every bookseller did and every reader who went into those bookstores did to ask me that beautiful question, which was, what else does a heart and a mind and a soul created by the events of Boy Swallows Universe have to say about the world? Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason, HarperCollins Publishers, Fourth Estate. I just feel so overwhelmed and grateful that I feel that it has um, found readers where they are and I get these beautiful amazing letters from people who feel that um, you know nothing to do with me but that it articulates something of their experience that maybe they hadn't necessarily been able to find language for um, in some instances has been that they um, care for somebody with mental illness and that seeing Martha's experience from the inside out has sort of changed how they feel about that person. Honey Bee by Craig Sylvie Alan and Unwin. In Honeybee, I'm articulating an experience that doesn't emerge from my own lived history. And this required me to immerse myself in the testimonies of some incredibly inspiring and courageous people, and to consult and connect with members of the trans and gender diverse community, all of whom were incredibly gracious with their time and kind enough to share their intimate stories with me. And it was that chorus of voices that ultimately shaped the novel and refined Honeybee's character. So before I announce the winner of the Literary Fiction Book of the Year, there is also a highly commended author in this section. And I'm so pleased to announce that that goes to All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton. And now the winner. The winner of the Literary Fiction Book of the Year for 2021 is A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing by Jessie Tu, published by Alan and Unwin. Congratulations, Jessie. That's insane. Wow, I'm so honoured. Um, all the other books are um, so wonderful and everyone should go out and read them. Um, I'd love to thank the one person, first of all, who has really brought this character, Jenna, into life, and that is my my agent, uh, Melanie Ostell, who from the first moment she read this first manuscript of this book, um, believed in what this character and what she was going through meant for 
um, for the Australian literary landscape. She really put this this journey on where it really belongs to and share the story of Jenna with the rest of the country. And so I'm so blessed to have her and her friendship. I'd love to thank Jane Paul Priman, my, uh, my publisher at Allen and Unwin for extraordinary support and love and kindness. Um, I'd love to thank everyone else at Allen and Unwin for everything they've done. My publicist, Isabel O'Brien. Um, and finally, I'd love to thank my my parents for everything that they've ever done for me and my partner Andrew and all my friends and my family who have just been the backbone of what I do and I do what I do and I can do what I do because of their unconditional love and support and I'm so blessed that I get to do what I do here in Australia. Ladies, gentlemen and friends beyond the binary, our next presenter has starred in many of the great cinema book adaptations of our time, from The Shipping News to Lord of the Rings to Thor Ragnarok. Would you please welcome Kate Blanchett. Hello everyone. I'm honoured to have the opportunity this evening not only to recognise the rich contribution that Australian literature has made within the realm of film and television, but also to present the winner of the 2021 ABIA Book of the Year. The creative adaptations of Australian literature stretch back to the beginnings of the film industry as we now know it. Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland was the world's first book-to-film adaptation in 1903, and Australia quickly followed in 1907 with Robbery Under Arms, the film adaptation of the novel by Australian novelist Rolf Bodrewood. Australia has one of the oldest film industries in the world, arguably introducing the first feature film with the 1906 production of The Kelly Gang. Many classic adaptations followed, among them John Cleary's The Sundowner, C.J. Dennis's The Sentimental Bloke, Ginger Mick, and Marcus Clark's For the Term of His Natural Life, just to name a few. For decades, Australian literature in film has also continued to well and truly punch above its weight globally. Miles Franklin's My Brilliant Career, Thomas Keneally's Schindler's List and Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith, Joan Lindsay's Picnic at Hanging Rock, Colin Thiel's Storm Boy, and more recently, Leanne Moriarty's Big Little Lies, Tim Winton's Breathe, and two of this year's big successes, Sam Bloom's Penguin Bloom, ABIA's 2017 Illustrated Book of the Year, and Jane Harper's The Dry, which was the 2017 ABIA Book of the Year. Personally, I have had the pleasure of diving into many roles in films inspired by novels. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Carol, Babel, Lord of the Rings, but perhaps closest to my heart is Peter Carey's wonderful Oscar and Lucinda. I had the chance to play Lucinda Laplastrier and it was my first major leading role on film. Screen adaptations from so many of Australia's remarkable authors are not only a powerful legacy, but more importantly, they have created a window through which we feed our collective imagination and examine the complex, ever-evolving stories of Australia, warts and all. With the talent and creative will that this country contains, I cannot help but feel excited by the real potential for more such fruitful collaborations, deepening and expanding these stories well into the future. So now, let's run through the nominations for this year's 2021 ABIA Book of the Year. The 2021 ABIA Book of the Year, proudly sponsored by Better Reading, is Phosphorescence on Awe, Wonder and Things That Sustain You When the World Goes Dark by Julia Baird, published by HarperCollins and Fourth Estate. Thank you all just so much for this tremendous honour. It takes, um, you know, a lot of love and a lot of support to be able to sit and write words that mean a lot to you. And this one just came straight from the heart, so um, I'm just grateful. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps things up from here. Would you please join us in congratulating all of our winners, all of our nominees, and a special thank you to all of the presenters and performers who made time tonight. Uh, we'll see you next time at the Australian Book Industry Awards. Are we doing the blues this year? Yeah, we are. <laughs> so, here we go. 
I'm very sorry. Start again. Hi, Jess. How are you? Winner of the. This is so cool. <laughs> you sneaky thing! <laughs> You've just thrown that at me. Wow. Well, truck drivers, some of the most voracious audiobook consumers. Voracious, I say ferocious. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, I've forgotten my fucking lines. No, oh, man. Hello, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's just really. Okay, there we go. <laughs> There's one bit um, if you, where I say um, I was awarded four Arbias. For, yeah. Can I just say, like, I was awarded yeah. a few or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What a legend, like, what a, what a dick. dick. <laughs> Zoom, so, you know, yeah. the, the newsreader look. Start again, start again. <laughs> How does it feel to have been nominated for the 2021 shortlist? Well, it's like swear. <laughs> Fucking awesome. <laughs> no, mate, boy, I have to... Oh, it's not, it must be a birthday. <laughs> no, from Adelaide, Adelaide. Oh. We're taking a little video from you. Woo! They're all laughing because there's a whole team here. One interviewer, one cameraman. <laughs> Able to continue to share their wisdom in safe ways. Apologies. <laughs> Just tell me to shut up, you know what I'm like, I can talk about ah. it. <laughs> That's good, that was easy. Well, that concludes our formal questions. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, have that one again. The left-handed book. I'm going to do another one. Hopefully without the screaming in the background. We got there. Almost. <laughs>